Man, this is one of those days. This is like take 84 for me. Not really like 7 or 8, whatever. But anyways, review. Here we go. Darksiders. Boom. You got it. You're set. So right off the bat, I'm going to say about this game is that it's what would happen if you just took God of War and then the Legend of Zelda series and then just crushed them together and the juices would form into this game. From the Legend of Zelda, you would have the the puzzle elements, the dungeon elements, the boss fights. You would take all that and just rip it straight out of the Legend of Zelda series. Uh, case in point would be this little puzzle coming up right ahead as you watch. S lost my train of thought. Legend of Zelda puzzles. So there we go. So if you're any kind of veteran of the Legend of Zelda series, none of these puzzles or platforming sections are gonna get to you. I think the most uh, confused I ever was was like 20 seconds. It took me 20 seconds on how to figure out how to do this one particular puzzle. Other than that, everything was a breeze. Everything was pretty simple. No problem whatsoever. Conversely, on the combat side, you have God of War as ta -da, combat. Look at that, timed it perfectly. As a as a combat, you can have uh, uh, taken straight from God of War. You'll have uh, one attack button, varying the the timing pushes, will vary the combinations. You also have your secondary weapons, which you uh, cure along the way of your travels. Mm. Very basic, very simple. So if you play God of War, you play Legend of Zelda, this game will just be instantly familiar and you won't have any problems with it. Given how the developer actually used those two games, it was pretty easy for them to get lazy on the story and just overlook it and just smash something in there, no problem. But what they actually did is was um, create a very good story, fairly good story, uh, that was driven by cutscenes. I enjoyed the cutscenes. They're not that long, about half an hour, half an hour, half a minute to a minute. Uh, and you get them fairly frequently. Um, this all game also had one of the most satisfying endings for me since, well, Halo Reach. But before that will probably be Bioshock. I love the ending on this game. It just gave it a sense of just oomph for me. And just made me want the sequel even more so than I already did. So given all that great stuff, I mean, you got good stuff from Legend of Zelda, you got great stuff from uh, God of War, you got a good story. Graphics, eh, they're not that great, but they're not that bad either. I didn't notice much of it. This was between HDMI and standard component. Just a couple of, just a little bit of tighter frame uh, frames for the HDMI, a little bit crisper. And the frame rate was just steady all around. Uh, there wasn't really any lag. That I noticed um, just a few when I was switching over between uh, different areas, but that was just expected, and it wasn't that long. Maybe a couple of a dozen frames uh, per second kind of dropped a little bit, but other than that, no big deal. The one thing I didn't like is the varying degrees of difficulty when you went from uh, normal to apocalyptic, the hardest setting. Nothing really changed. Uh, there wasn't anything major change in the enemy AI or the enemy composition all that changed was your life and very early on when you only got one life bar and the standard enemy hits you once and takes away half your life that can be very aggravating so for the first hour and a half two hours if you're playing apocalyptic it could be very frustrating for you moving on we're gonna go ahead and go on to uh the merchant vulgrim i think very basic i mean he'll give you items that you could use to uh raise your uh energy your health etc etc you got upgrades for your sword your main weapon uh, for your secondary weapons, there you go, right there. Different combinations, power-ups, upgrades. You could also buy uh, new spells and upgrades for your equipment as well, I believe. If I would ever go back to switching over to the next stage, I oh, guess not. But there you go, very basic. You also have your uh, item menu where you could attach different enhancements to your weapons that you uh, find along your travels. Uh, they're fairly balanced. There's a few that are pretty much worthless, but a couple of them and are overpowered, but mostly they stay in between. So it's a really good um, combination of different enhancement enhancements and what they do. So you're not choosing one over the other. Uh, you also have, uh, let's see, what is on the menu? It just pretty much keeps track of your items, uh, your consumables, which, uh, like I said before, uh, gives you more health, more wrath, etc., etc. It also keeps track of the combos you've purchased and what you could do, which is really great. I love it when games do this. That way you don't know lost. It's like, wait a minute, did I buy this combination? And wait a minute, how do I do this? 
because there was a lot of different weapons to keep track of and just adding that little bit is great it helps you keep track of everything um, artifacts are things you could collect as you wander around and you just trade them in for a huge uh, amount of souls that you use to purchase etc etc um, and there's your uh, pass abilities your equipment wrath abilities uh, pretty much spells or wrath abilities and then if we go one more over to the left it pretty much just uh, shows you what level your weapons are at uh, they just do more damage as you level up and how many shards you need to uh, upgrade your wrath or life the next uh, screen I'm going to show you is just pretty much your uh, select button It's going to give you a map you can just watch it understand it instead I'm going to talk about uh, the new grading system I'm doing uh, the point system is great for new games but not so much for the games that I'm going to be reviewing which are older ones um, instead I'm going to be doing uh, buy rent or borrow uh, for this one, I would recommend buying it. Uh, the cheapest I was able to find it was fourteen ninety nine on Amazon. Don't rent it; you won't have enough time to enjoy it. Uh, and if, but if you got a friend that could let you borrow it, that's great. But like I said before, buy it fourteen ninety nine on Amazon dot com. As always, if you have a game you want me to review, uh, leave a comment. I'll see what I can do.